Hi, I'm Mark coming to you from Baker Screen Acres. Today is the 8th and uh, we're coming up pretty close here on our hearing which is going to be on the 12th. That's this coming Friday. It is in Lake City, Michigan. 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We recommend people be there about 1. And we're expecting a pretty big crowd so um, if you don't make it into the courtroom we're going to have a briefing here afterwards right here at the farm and we're going to let people know how things went. Okay, um, there's some interesting news afoot and I think part of the reason why people have been engaged in this struggle is because they are being made uh, to understand what is going on. So these are some interesting facts that have just happened. Um, okay, the last time that you heard from me it was with my family up there in the barn and uh, that's when I told you that the state had asked the judge to impose a $700,000 fine on my farming operation. <clears throat> um, first word that came to my mind was uh, excessive, all right? And when that word came to my mind, the next thing that came to my mind was the, uh, the Bill of Rights, all right? U.S. Constitution. The first 10 amendments are called the Bill of Rights, and they're the ones that guarantee, guarantee American citizenry freedoms, all right? Very important because when we take an oath to defend and protect the Constitution of the United States from enemies foreign and domestic, we, we don't care who it is that's perpetrating an offense against the, uh, the Constitution. We don't care who that is, but they become the enemy of the U.S. citizen, and they have to be dealt with accordingly. So I'm going to bring you to the Eighth Amendment, and it reads just like this. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel or, un or unusual punishment inflicted. Very short amendment. It's the Eighth Amendment. Uh, you can Google this. You can find it. It's right there with the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. All right. Uh, so it becomes obvious that the Constitution has been trounced by the Attorney General's office. Now we know who the people who signed that letter saying that they're going to find me 700. We know who they are. But we don't think that they just decided one Wednesday morning, hey, why don't we find them $700,000? We know that it was a, a thought out planned operation that came from the top down. This is the Attorney General's office. Bill Schuette is his name. Don't forget that name. He wants to be the next governor of the state of Michigan. So I'm afraid that this is going to haunt him because we're a family farm and we've just been, you know, $700,000 levied against us. And my understanding is they're looking for additional charges. Uh, but they violated the Eighth Amendment. So what does that mean? Um, in our country, uh, if let's say someone breaks into my house in the middle of the night, they have uh, violated the Fourth Amendment, right? They can't come in my house, it's my home, without an invitation from me or a warrant from, say, a judge or probable cause in, in the case of law enforcement. But let's say it's just some bad guy that wants to come in and, uh, and steal my stuff. He's breaking a uh, constitutional guarantee that's given to me as a U.S. citizen to protect me and my family and my home. If that happens, is it my job to catch that assailant and put that assailant in jail. It is not. It is my job to restrain that person if I can. But then it becomes the responsibility of who? The county sheriff. So in this case, <clears throat> the state levies an excessive fine against me, clearly breaking the Eighth Amendment. We've identified it via the airwaves through YouTube. It's also been in the Cadillac newspaper. So it sets up a very interesting scenario. My county sheriff, who has been largely disengaged through this entire process, has something that just entered into his world. I'm one of the citizens of this county, and he has a, a sworn duty to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States from enemies both foreign and domestic. The Attorney General's office has trounced the Eighth Amendment, 
pertaining to one of the citizens of this county. The sheriff of the county has a, a constitutional an oath that he took to defend this constitution, and he has a duty to perform. Very interesting. Let's see if he'll, if he'll do it. <clears throat> but the pressure is on him, too, because he's an elected official. Now, let's say that he doesn't. There's every possibility that a statement of charges could be levied against him, and he could be prosecuted for not doing his duty. And so this gets kind of interesting. Now we're going to have the Attorney General come into town here shortly. Uh, they, they might be taken off in handcuffs. We don't know. But it's just an interesting scenario. I think people need to know about that. This is how our law works. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to watch that one. Um, I, you know... I could have, I suppose, filed a police report, but I don't really need to because the information is out there. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows that it's happened. So let's see what the, uh, the old sheriff does here. Okay, another interesting fact. Uh, a man by the name of Steve Halstead. Steve Halstead. He was the number one vet for the state of Michigan. He worked for the Michigan Department of Agriculture. And some of you may remember him because he is the the guy. He's actually a PhD because he goes by the name Dr. Steve Halstead and I understand that he's been in that position for almost 20 years. So he probably planned to retire from that position from the state. Well, doesn't look like that's going to happen. He may retire but not in that position. I think they, he's been Rodney stoked. I think he's been stoked because he's been relieved of that position and move someplace else. I don't know. He might be mowing lawns with Rodney down there in Detroit. I really don't know. Uh, I read the job description, but it was a bunch of gobbledygook and it didn't make much sense. It doesn't matter. He was relieved. Just because a state employee is relieved, that doesn't mean much. But when it's in connection with something that he said, I think it's interesting. This man, on the stand in Sheboygan, I was in the courtroom when he did this, he stated under oath, that there are two species of swine. And when he was questioned further on that, he <clears> said, oh, there's the kind that are in captivity, and then there's the kind that are feral. Now, if one of my kids said something like that under oath, <clears throat> we might just kind of let it go. But when a guy that holds a Ph.D. in animal science says something like that, that uh, that's troublesome. There's a thing called perjury. When you get on the stand, you raise your right hand and you swear to tell the truth. And you're basically saying, I'll tell the truth and I'm authorizing you guys to, uh, to charge me with perjury if I don't. Well, I think maybe he thought he'd get up on the stand and just impress everybody with his Ph.D., but none of us were real impressed with that. Uh, we're students of science as farmers, and we know that there, is, uh, there are absolutes. Right? Now, let me go into that a little bit, a little science lesson here, a little biology lesson. Um, there are two terms that are getting thrown around, and, and we want to explain those. One of the terms is species, and the other one is breed. Species would be, say, like these cows. Their species is bovine. So these cows happen to be red, and they are red Angus. Red Angus is their breed. Right? But we could have black and white cows here that would be Holsteins, that would be their breed, but their, their uh, species is still bovine. Now there is only one species of bovine, one species of cow. And the way that you tell a species is you can have a black and white cow that's a Holstein, and you can have a red cow that is a, uh, a red Angus. <clears throat> or you could have a, a Jersey out here. If they can breed and their offspring is fertile, that means that they're the same species, right? So, um, before us we have this feral swine thing. Uh, and Dr. Halstead is stating that a feral pig, now remember a feral pig is a pig that was under the husbandry of human beings, but either escaped or was abandoned and then is rewilding itself, you know, in order to survive. That is a feral pig. So we could take Porky Pig 
and we could drop him off in the Bob Marshall wilderness, abandon him, you know, drop him out of a helicopter with a parachute, and we've abandoned him out in the wilderness. In order for him to survive, he must become feral. But by becoming feral, he does his species does not change. He's still um, swine. That is still his. You know, he, he maintains the same species. Uh, conversely, if we go down to uh, Texas and we set up a trap and we catch a feral pig, which they do have them down there, you can check them out on YouTube. There's lots of them. Some of them are black and white, some of them look like porky pigs, some of them look like our pigs. This, they can look like anything. It's their way of life that makes them feral. But it, let's say we catch, catch one of those and we bring it up to Baker's Green Acres and we put it behind my fences. It's no longer feral because we're in the process of domesticating it. As soon as we make the decision we're going to bring it under the husbandry of us as professional farmers, we are domesticating that animal. But its species does not change. It's the same species because we can take a feral pig and we can take a pig out of a, uh, one of Sam Hines' hog houses, a male and a female, we put them together, they can have babies, and those babies will be able to produce fertile offspring. So there is only one species of pig. The reason it's interesting that Dr. Halstead has been relieved of duty, um, I work for a bureaucracy, we call it fired, is because he stated on the stand that there were two species of pigs. He stated that. Um, where I come from, that is called perjury. He made another statement that was very troublesome, and that statement was he didn't believe, or it was his personal opinion, that he didn't believe animals could be raised safely outside of a confinement scenario. Right, that's a troublesome statement. But anyway, it appears as though the state has stoked him and they want to separate themselves from him. Um, kind of interesting, kind of interesting. All right, I'm going to keep it short. Uh, that's just what's happened today. I will probably make a video um, whenever the time arises up until our, our hearing this Friday. Remember, um, on Saturday, we're going to open the farm up. We're going to roast some pigs. Looks like we're going to have a big crowd. I just got a big tent today. Um, keep in mind when you show up here, if I need you to volunteer, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tag you to help with uh, food preparation and other things like this. Um, if you are a volunteer by nature, come see me and, and uh, we'll put you to work. We have some lodging here at the house. We have about 16 beds. We're going to have the campground open and then there's plenty of area to set up tents and stuff like that or campers. It's supposed to be a nice weekend and I think we're going to have fun. I think what we're going to do is just do demonstrations all day. We'll, we'll process some pigs, process some chickens. Um, just do what we do and uh, just have some fun. So this is Mark from Baker's Green Acres signing off.